hope you've been able to really focus on this this talk you know see see what i did there What on earth is to be done about distractions in prayer? I guess there's distractions all over the place, but particularly I'm thinking in prayer. Do you ever have that? Like you're, you're, you're really trying to pray and you just... <laughs> there's thoughts going everywhere. It's a mess. It's a mess in there. Prayer, you know, you're thinking you have to really, really focus and, and God's probably going to get maybe annoyed. He's not going to get annoyed if you're getting distracted. But uh, it can be very discouraging and it can feel like I'm not really praying properly interesting thing uh the more i've prayed because i've been doing it now for years the less i worry about distractions the more i kind of just roll with it what do i mean by that so what i typically do is i make the distraction my topic of conversation with jesus there you go i go with it rather than try to fight against it i say right jesus so this conversation what do you think would you shine your light on it oh my gosh it made me so annoyed etc etc i i i go with it I found that to be really, really helpful. And I've also found that often, yeah, I've really had confirmations that that was really how God wanted me to deal with it. And often the advice given by spiritual directors and, and it's even in some of the spiritual books. So make your distraction the topic, at least briefly, of your meditation, of your prayer, and try to move with it. And then just constantly bringing it back to focusing on the Lord. It's all about prayers, about relationship, connection with God. So even my annoyance, anger, fear, hate, whatever the emotion is, those can be legitimate topics of meditation. Or if even if there's, they, they touch into an area of sin, it's like, okay, well, yeah, I often as my topic and my, my acts of the heart that I do in prayer are repentance. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. So if, if you need to, you can, you can do that. That crack just now, that was my left knee cracking, just so you know. Otherwise, there's some kind of preventative measures that we can take to help us so that when we're in prayer, we're less likely to get distracted. Because sometimes, sometimes it's not because some huge thing just happened and I'm really, I can't think of anything else except sorting out this issue in my head and my heart. Sometimes the distractions come because I just ran into prayer, didn't pause, didn't breathe, didn't calm down. My head is somewhere else, my body is somewhere else. I mean, just pausing when you come to prayer, even before you come to prayer, slowing down. That's why I find prayer in the morning really helpful because I'm already really slowed down. It's an effort. I have to speed up to pray. But if you do it like more in the evening, it's a good thing before your prayer, you know, just start to start to turn down the throttle a bit of your thoughts in your heart and just get into a more restful zone. Start to think ahead. Oh, I'm going into a prayer time now. Remember the times prayer was delightful. That can really help me to get it kind of in the zone. I'm like, yeah, it's just I calm my breathing, I calm my thinking, I calm my, my bodily activity. I, uh, I chill out a little bit if I can take some time uh, of rest before my prayer time. And then my body and my heart and my mind are more ready for it. Other little tips and tricks to calm down. I try to pray in places that are kind of conducive to prayer. And it can be helpful to have a picture and maybe a candle. Again, these are things that actually can help calm us that can help us uh, put aside the distractions so we're better able to pray. Another great way, a kind of a preparatory way to reduce distractions and increase your recollection is to do some spiritual reading during the day. So from time to time, just read a little kind of phrase or something from a book or from some thing that gets sent to your phone. I don't know. I don't know about those things, but I'm just trying to pretend like I know. But I'm sure there's an app that will send you a nice thought about Jesus every now and again through the day. <laughs> See what you can make of that. I would also say about distractions, sometimes I don't make them the subject of my meditation. They're just distractions. There's a little phrase in the Song of Songs, and it says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes. It's the, the bride and the bridegroom in the Song of Songs are kind of talking to each other. And I'm not sure if it's the bride who says this to the bridegroom, but we're going to catch these foxes because these foxes are... are doing damage to the vineyard. The vineyard, you could see, as an image of the fruit of relationship with God. The joy and the love is ripening in there. But then there's these things that come in and attack it. So to catch the foxes is often used by spiritual writers, St. Francis de Sales and others, as dealing with these distractions that come up in prayer. So sometimes I don't. Um, you make them the subject of my 
of my meditation. Sometimes it's, it's almost in the, the realm of fantasy. Now by fantasy, I mean a kind of a self-centered daydream. You know it's fantasy rather than like proper meditation or, or prayer because you will be the topic of the meditation. You will be center stage. It'll be something that will make your ego and make you look good. So when I catch myself in fantasy or sometimes a version of fantasy for me is I get in those like cyclical conversations. How would I rerun that conversation so that I would win? You know, I could uh, get stuck in these things, which can be similar. As I said, sometimes I will make those a topic of my meditation, but I've also found it very helpful to deal with them in another way. So very simply, if I catch myself doing this, I will just kind of turn back to God because I've been focused on myself. I'll turn back to God and I'll say, sorry, sorry, I was in la la land, fantasy land. And then I will very gently bring myself back to the topic of my meditation. So maybe I was reading a scripture. I'll just read the scripture again. Or if I was just journaling, I'll look back at what I journaled. Like, what was the thing that really struck me? Okay, let me start back there again. But I try not to feel like bad and beat myself up around this stuff because sometimes the brain just does stuff and the heart just does stuff and the emotions just do stuff. Like kittens jumping out of a box. You're trying to gather up all of the lovely little kittens, get them into this box, and they keep jumping out and all of it. And they're very kind of cute and harmless. And so too with these these distractions, you know, they're just, they can be just cute and harmless. They're not necessarily major evils, but you just gently, gently bring your attention back to the Lord. And just gently say sorry. It's not a major deal deal. Your humanity wanders sometimes. So just bring it back, say sorry, and then back to your topic and off you go. And if it keeps happening, that's okay. That's okay. Just turning up is enough for the Lord and that you do your lousy best. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to try and move towards perfection, but gently. There you go. That's my thoughts on distractions. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've been able to really focus on this this talk, you know. See, see what I did there? <laughs> Lovely. Bye now. Yeah, bye-bye.